so evolution what is evolution we have discussed about the variation so what are variations variations are the differences in characters between the closely related species so how these variations takes place variations takes place during reproduction during reproduction male and female gamete fuses and the genes are copied the dna is copied so there may be certain errors in copying errors in copying and during the process of reproduction such variations takes place and these variations they accumulate in a large number leads to the formation of a new species this way the evolution is a gradual process which goes on acquired and inherited characters so to understand this if you read the situations given in the previous activity in the book so in the situation 3 the beetles they were reduced their size due to the starvation due to the unavailability of the food so in situation 3 it was given that the trees or the leaves became shorter or the small they were storing less food due to the shortage of food so the food available to the beetles it was less their size was reduced to very small size earlier they were be they will be having bigger size body because of that heavy food available but at the present situation the food was shortage so the size it reduced but this change is a temporary change it will not be reflected in the dna of the organism so if any change or any variation if it has to be passed from one generation to another generation then it should be changed in the dna so these kind of temporary changes will regain back if the food is available in plenty again they they will be stout they will be growing bigger so here we understand that if the characters are to be inherited there must be a change in the dna there should be a change in the dna of reproductive cells so then only the change is reflected in the next generation lamarckism jean baptist lamarck he was a scientist he has given one theory called as the law of inheritance of acquired characters so in olden days people believed that no organism is evolved from any other forms so they thought that all organisms were created so as they are they were created there was no change in the bodies of these organisms that was the belief but jean baptist lamarck he was the first person to propose the theory of evolution so at some point he observed the size of the deer and the giraffe were same he thought that the giraffe has got a long neck because as the food was not available on the ground level the giraffe started stretching its neck for few generations the stretching of the neck lead to elongation of the neck and finally the giraffe has got a long neck that was his idea how the giraffes have evolved from the ordinary deer like animal so this theory is called as inheritance of acquired characters so later he proposed the inheritance of acquired characters there was an another scientist called as another person called as august wisman so this person to check whether what lamarck has told was correct or not he conducted experiments on rats he cut the tails of the rats for number of generations but he did not find the offsprings are born without a tail he always found that the new rats the offsprings are born with a tail so he concluded and he proved that the bodily changes will not reflect in the generations next generations so these physical changes are not inherited so that means if any person is lost hand or leg the children his children definitely will uh, take birth with hands and legs because this is a physical damage it is not reflected in the genes dna of the person so this was what was given by the lamarck it was disproved by august wisman so now let us uh, look at the next person next scientist who proposed the theory of evolution the theory of natural selection he was charles darwin he was born in england in 1802 and died in 1882 at an age of 22 years he voyaged on a world survey ship called as hms beagle and his voyage it was for 5 years 
At an age of 22 years, five years, he has gone for a world survey. He visited a number of places, including Galapagos Islands. So where he found a different group of closely related different birds and observed the features of these birds and he got so many ideas about the, the, about the evolution process. And he was also inspired by Malthus theory. So the Malthus has given a theory, an essay on that population growth patterns. So the population, how it grows, the population grows in geometrical progression and whereas this uh, food sources grow in arithmetical progression. So that idea was given by Malthus. So based on all these uh, references, based on all these observations, Charles Darwin proposed the theory of natural selection. What is natural selection? So according to this theory of natural selection, the nature itself will select only the suitable organisms and the rest will be eliminated. The fittest of the, uh, the survival of the fittest means only the fittest organisms will survive. What is the meaning of fittest? That means the organisms which can get their food, which can protect themselves in a present habitat, in the present environment will survive. The one which cannot get its food, the one which cannot protect itself, then it will be eliminated from the existing scenario. So that is called as survival of the fittest and nature will be selecting such uh, organisms. That was the theory is called as natural selection. So we can understand this natural selection from the situations, three situations of beetle which was given in the book under an activity. So there we found that there were certain beetles. So these are red beetles, just think that red beetles. Among the red beetles because of some variation, some changes in their DNA, some green beetle has come, the green beetles. So the green color, the change is advantageous. So the trait is advantageous, dominant trait is advantageous. Some traits, some variations will be dangerous, some variations will be useful, some will be harmful. So here the variation green color, so how it benefited the green beetles you see. So the green beetles, because of the green color, they merge with the green leaves and crows cannot see the green beetles. And they see only the red beetles and they eat them. So the population of red beetle decreases and green beetle increases. One day the red beetle may disappear totally and the green bee po beetle population may be growing up. So here this green color trait helped this beetle to grow in number. So it is the fittest one in this case. So this is not the fittest one, it is eliminated out. In such a way the variations that are developed in organism sometimes they will be useful. Sometimes they may not be useful. The organisms that which get the useful variations will survive for further generations, which will get variations which are not useful, they will be eliminated. This is the idea of natural selection. Speciation. This shows that how new species are formed. So how can you say that new species, different species means two different species in the sense they cannot mate, they cannot reproduce together. So that is what uh, we define it there. So in the example, here we have some beetles which are of red color and blue color. This is red beetle and this is blue beetle. So these beetles were living. We have seen a situation where crows were eating the beetles. So accidentally while eating some beetles, the crows have dropped blue beetle somewhere else, a blue beetle somewhere else in some other location. So there, here the beetle in this particular ecosystem, in this particular area, environment, it will develop new variations and it will evolve into some other after a few number of years, a number of generations. Here at some other place, this beetle will evolve into some other creature. So after a number of generations, earlier, even though both the beetles of same color or different color, they can reproduce together. Only difference is a color, a small variation, but these variations they accumulate in large number when they are separated by the geographical regions. So after so many generations, if these two beetles come together, they cannot mate and reproduce young ones together. So a new species is evolved. In this way, species, speciation takes place. 
So now look at the evidences of evolution. So evolution theories were given, given, but were there any evidences? Yes, there are certain evidences that is supporting the theory of evolution. The one is homologous organs. And next one, analogous organs, embryology and fossils. All these provide the evidences. What are these homologous organs? If you see man, man has got limbs, hands. If you see that whales, they have flippers. If you see that uh, wing of a bat, it has got a wing of the bat. So if you see these organs from outside, they look dissimilar. Their shapes are different. They are not alike. But if you see the internal arrangement of the bones, the number of bones and their arrangement is exactly alike. So homologous organs or the organs which they have internal anatomy is of same, but the external form and function are different. The human may use the hand to grasp the things, a cheetah would use it to run or pierce or a mole will have the same arrangement which is used for digging likewise. Now let us see the analogous organs. If you see the wing of a bat and wing of a bird, do you think that both are of same function? These, an these analogous organs, they have similar function, flying, but internal anatomy is different. If you see the bat, it has got that expanded skin as a wing, but whereas in case of birds, they have feathers as wings. So their wings and their flying is based on feathers, whereas bat, it is a thin fold of skin between their fingers that is used for flying. So those are called as analogous organs. So if you observe the homologous organs internal anatomy, you will find that same kind of bone arrangement there. It will give an evidence that the different species are somewhere they are related. In the embryology is the one more thing where which gives an evidence. If you observe the embryo, embryos of frogs, of fish, human and different, different animals, even a great embryologist also finds it difficult to find which is human embryo, which is frog embryo, which is fish embryo in the early stages because all the embryos are of similar appearance which strengthens the theory of evolution. And the next one is fossils. Fossils are the dead remains of plants and animals. Fossils are the bones and other remnants of animals. Sometimes maybe just the impressions left by the animals in the mud and in the rock which are um, uh, mixed in the soil. So which we obtain by digging, excavation. So it gives an evidence. The fossils of dinosaurs tell about the dinosaurs lived millions of years ago. The scientists, the archaeologists, they also have techniques to find out the age of the fossil to which era it belongs to by carbon dating technique. So carbon dating, the isotopes of carbon and certain elements, they decompose at a specific rate. So on basing that rate, by using that uh, carbon dating technologies, they find out the years. So even in our state, uh, we found Yamanapalli, in that village in Adilabad district, they found a fossil of a dinosaurus, one kind of dinosaurus called as a rare kind, Ketosaurus which belongs to that lower age of dinosaurs that is 160 million years ago. That dinosaur fossils were found and uh, with, uh, these fossil, the bones of these dinosaur, it was preserved in B.M. Birla Science Museum at Hyderabad. So see, the fossils, they give an evidence about the animals, the evolution, and it gives a proof for the extinct animals also.